Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And I've, already, I've already said that. Why am I saying it twice? My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. It's a hat trick. And Vinny's now going, ah, ah. I don't know what he wants. He wants my attention. As soon as I don't give him my... It's weird, because I'll be at the computer listening to some music or something. I have to have something on for him. I'm quite happy to sit in silence. Genuinely, I'm like, when I'm in bed, I'd rather just have nothing. No music, no audio book, no radio, apart from Friday, Saturday and Sunday, because I listen to a radio show. Nick Abbott, between... 10 and 1 in the evening that's just uh, my weekly thing however Vinny if there's no background sound as such he gets very triggered by outside sounds like a neighbour closing a door or opening a door or farting, or anything, really. He can hear dogs from miles away. Which is ironic, because he can never hear me when I tell him what to do. When I tell him to come back to me, or when I tell him, you know, to stop doing something, doesn't hear me. But he can hear a butterfly from 6,000 miles away. Burping. So... Oh, I did some real. I don't know if I told you. I mean, I'm doing weights every day, three times a day, and it's just very basic. Really, just gradually increasing the the reps. So I only do. I don't do sets. I just do reps. So the was it the squats with weights now up to a hundred. I could do hundred. I'm not going to say easily, but I could do more now. But I also exercise my forearms by moving the weights back and forward, like just moving my wrists, basically, while I do the weights. So I do that a hundred times as well. I do curls. With These are with dumbbells. I do curls. I could probably I could do about 50 curls fairly comfortably. Well, you know, it's not comfortable, comfortable, but I can do 50. And I don't know what they're called, but the ones where I'm, I sit down and I push the weights up above my head from the side, I do about 50 of those. It's just gradually gone up from like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, over time. And it does get easier. You know, it's just... It is. The first 10 or 20 is just not even any effort, really. But the other day I thought, hmm, I will... I'll try and do some of the old-fashioned stuff. So I could go back to doing some curls, some um, bicep curls. But what I'll do is I'll do as many as I can do, and then I'll put the weights down and wait a minute or two. I let myself recover a bit and then I go back and do as many as I can do and then put the weights down again and then wait for a minute or two an hour or two I should have waited really and I went back and did as many as I could uh, to the point where I was struggling to even do a couple and that was about three days ago and my biceps are still hurting not like, not damaged. Well, I guess they were damaged because that's how you build muscle. You break the muscle down and then it repairs. But it's like, it's weird because I've been doing weights for every day for months and months and months and months and months. And I never really, I feel kind of, I'm getting a bit stronger a little bit. and But there's never any immediate, like pain you know like, like you know like when you go to the gym if you haven't been to the gym for a while and 
you ache. Uh, I don't have that because I'm doing it every day. I don't normally have that. I do now in my biceps. It's it's weird. And I can't do my biceps until it heals. I feel like I need to kind of, I'm still doing the other weights, but I can't, I can't really, don't feel a real comfortable, feel really, don't feel comfortable doing the bicep curls while they're hurting. <laughs> like I feel I need to let them heal first. So I'll just have to do some other exercises and then get back on them. But it kind of surprised me. I didn't, I mean, I could have just done three sets of ten but that wouldn't have even been hard you know it's I mean they're not heavy weights which is probably why it wouldn't be that hard but, but I thought there's no point doing this doing the sets because you know I do the repetitions there but if I do have a break and do some more there's no point doing it if it's not going to actually do anything I said do quite a lot there, didn't I? A lot of do-do's going on. Oh, by the way, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And I do have a website. Which I've had for decades. But it's now... For some reason, I'm kind of pleased with how it is. It's how I want it to be, and that's how it's going to be for at least a year. For the next year, even though I want to devote every single second of my time to creating stuff on the website. I'm not talking about new recordings, I mean just building bits and stuff. I'm not going to. I say that, but I have been working on it already today and yesterday. But I'm going to try and pull pull back from that, because that that really well I do enjoy it so I guess it's not a bad thing it's just there's this this need inside my head to try and organise all of my recordings which is a really big task due to how many recordings I have in fact the other day I had let me see if I can I think it was Ray, someone, a man called Ray contacted me and oh by the way, a big shout out to Cara, Vinnie calls her Christmas tree Cara. You did I tell you he's got Vinny's got a friend he calls her nanny treats. Every time she sees him, it's almost like I don't think she remembers us. I don't think she remembers me. And she actually asked me my name the other day for the first time. Some people do that after I've seen him for a couple of years. And Vinny loves her, and she loves Vinny. Sort of like she falls in love with him for the first time every time she sees him. And she remembers him sometimes, but other times she's like, oh, what's his name? And even though I've told her many times. But she loves him. And she gives him treats. She doesn't have a dog. I think she used to, but she doesn't have a dog of her own now. And I told her that he calls her nanny treats. And she said, well, my name's actually Dorothy, or whatever her name was. I can't remember. I said, no, it's Nanny Treats. <laughs> That's what he calls you. So she absolutely adores him. Do you, ever, do you ever get someone tell you their name, and it's literally forgotten before it even enters your ears? It's like it's a missile being shot down. <laughs> it... It's just weird, like, my name's Eric. Gone, like, no, no, didn't even get to my brain. My website, okay. Oh, no, I was trying to find that person, so let me have a look. 
if I go out of there, go into this one and look for messages. No, it's not that one. I've got no idea where it is then. Where is it? Um, that's weird. I genuinely do not know where. The problem is I've got too many different accounts and too many different things. Let's see if it's on here. It might be on here. Is it on here? No, it's not on here either. So I've got no idea. Genuinely don't know. It was, I think his name's Ray. But I've no idea where I saw the message. It's got, maybe it's on my phone. Perhaps it was on Instagram. Instagram. Let's have a look. Messages on Instagram. Yes, it was Instagram. Maybe it wasn't. Was it? Why is... Oh. Right. I can't seem to find the blooming thing. Chats. Right, so if I go back to this... I can't find it. Jason, nope. I really uh. right. Okay, I can't find it. Anyway, it was a really lovely message, and for some reason, it's just hiding from me. But Ray asked me which, if I knew which, "Let Me Boy to Sleep" episode has me talking about Adele and he said that he thought I originally called it Adele's songs scare me now I do recollect talking about Adele I do I do I do because I think I, I sort of went through some of her lyrics And, oh my dear, I have found it. I've just, I just Googled it. <laughs> I found it. It's number 575. Let me bore you to sleep, number 575. Now, it's on iVoox. 575. Adele's songs scare me. And it was the 6th of January 2021. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I wonder if it actually comes up. It does come up. Does it play though? Does it play? Does it play? Don't let the commercials keep you waiting. Right, so according to this, I'm going to go on to mute just so I don't have to... So it doesn't disrupt the actual recording I'm doing now. Does it play? You can start the music. Play. No. It's not playing, but yeah, so it's from probably a different podcast. It's probably from the podcast that got deleted, so it's a let me boy to sleep one that got deleted. So, what I ended up doing is uploading a new let me boy to sleep podcast, but a lot of them didn't have the titles anymore or the dates uh, or the images 
and that's one of them. So it's number 575, Let Me Boy to Sleep, Adele's Song Scare Me, 6th January 2021. Uh, Ray said it was funny, so he wanted to listen to it again. So I found it, Ray. I'll post that. I'll, I'll post that on the, my Facebook group. So, hmm. I wonder if I could find... I might be able to find the title of some more of my recordings. And that's a new thing I can set myself for. So that's another week's worth of work. Just to find the titles of the old recordings that I don't have titles for. <gasps> yeah! I had some good titles. I had some good images as well. Like going back a couple of years, some of the images are pretty good. Hmm. And I think for the first hundred or so, maybe 200, I might not have had titles, but then I started giving them titles. Just really, a lot of them were just really random titles. I had nothing to do with the recording at all. Hmm. Um, so my Facebook group is Jason Newland's Boring Group. My YouTube channel is at Jason Newland. I've got over 2,000 videos on there. My website, I'll just quickly go through that, is, I've got, it's, the, it's basically, it is a podcast now. So all the latest recordings are on there. I've also got a page for episodes, which is pretty much the same page as that. But I think it only shows the most recent 400 recordings, which is technically quite a lot, you know, but not compared to how many thousands I've done. And I'm talking about all the recordings, not just the Let Me Boy to Sleep ones. So there's a few ways around it, and I can fix the issue but it would take it might take six months to do it <laughs> it's a three months or four you know it take a long time to do all that and one of the problems I have is once I get it's not necessarily a problem it's a, it's a good thing if I'm if I'm doing something useful I guess but when I focus on one thing I tend to get a bit all encompassed into it so it's for example if I was going to go onto Spreaker and make a podcast for each and every not just the different podcasts but also break them up by numbers or by years so I do like 2017, 18, 19, 20 21, 22, 23, 24 for the Let Me Boy to Sleep or is it 2018 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then I go back to the deep sleep whisper. And I could do it by year. You know, or by number. So that's quite a few different podcasts. And then I can add them to the... Yeah, add them to the, to the overall thing. I'm just, yeah, it's just, it's not just the fact that it's going to take ages, it's going to also be quite expensive. So I'm probably not going to do that right now. So on the website, it's pretty good actually. Uh, so you've got, there's a section in the menu, podcasts, which lists all of the podcasts I've got. So Hypnosis, Sleeping Deeply, Let Me Boy to Sleep, Chronic Pain, Deep Sleep Whisper, Jason's Bedtime Story Time, Let Me Bore Your Pain Away, Relaxation for Stress and Panic Attacks, Relax to Sleep Hypnosis Daily, Sleep E Boring Objects, Stop Smoking Hypnosis, Stress and Pain Relief, and Stop Now Biting. They're all individual podcasts, so you click on those links, it will take you to those individual podcasts. The other thing is reviews, so there's a I've only got one review on this website so far because I've only had the website for about three days, four days, like in its current format. Oh, wait a minute, that's weird. 
it's got a review, but it's not allowing me to... No wonder people aren't leaving a review, because it hasn't got... Leave a review on it. I'm telling people, go to the review section, but there's no section that's on there that says leave a review. How... Okay. If you leave a review on the podcast that you're listening, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's uh, Spreaker, whether it's Spotify, wherever it is, if you leave a review on there, it will come up on my website automatically. There is also a way that I can add a review section, so I'm going to have to look at that. There's a contact page, so you can send me an email. I've also got information about the background music that I use in this, uh, which is copyright free. There's the music's deep relaxation from Kevin McLeod in Compotect.com. And there's a picture of him as well. He's nearly as handsome as me. Uh, there's the Facebook group which is Jason Newland's Boring Group. There's a link to that as well. I've currently got 200 members. So it's a small group, but it's small but sexy. There's a link to my YouTube channel, which is YouTube at Jason Newland. That's my YouTube handle or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, and PayPal link, follow link so you can follow me as well. I don't know if that's... Although that seems to be playing up that page, so I might get rid of that. Because it, keep, it keeps taking me to a... I don't know why. It's taking me to a different page. I need to look up, look that up. Because at the moment... Yeah, that's, that's strange. I need to update Apple Podcasts. However... If for, if, if for any reason your podcast host is not playing my updated, for, it's not updating or it's changing or it's you can't find my stuff on there, admittedly, you probably won't be listening to this for you if you can't find it, but remember jasonnewland.com. That's the home. You'll always be able to listen to the latest recordings there because it is a podcast in itself I just think it's worth remembering because then you can I, mean, I don't know is it is it I suppose it's a lot easier to use your own podcast host but this is a podcast so I don't think there's a huge difference um, also with this you can not only can you play it you can rewind 10 seconds you can jump forward 30 seconds you might want to jump forward 10 hours probably with mine you can also change the speed so times 1 1.5 or 2 times you can change the volume you can download the episode this is for each individual episode you can also share the episode on X, Facebook, Blue Sky, whatever that is, Instagram, Pinterest, 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 WhatsApp, Telegram, Reddit, and by email. So you can share all my stuff, man, if you want. I went to the... F oh, it's raining today. I've already got through one pair of trousers. With the rain. Yeah, it just scares me. I ended up weeing myself. No, I just... I, I don't... It's the only weather... The only weather that kind of gives me a little bit of a... Uh, a bit... Oh, I'm not a big fan of getting wet. Even in Thailand, I got wet when I was in Thailand many years ago. I got soaking wet. And it weren't cold. I mean, it was the opposite to cold. But I was furious. 
and I'm walking down the road. I mean, complete. I don't feel I've ever been that drenched in my life. When I was walking, the water was pretty much above my shoes as well. It was flooding. That's the only way I could get. I forgot my canoe. The one day I forget my canoe. And I'm walking past these bars that are all, all raised up. There's a reason why all the shops are raised up and there's a big step you've got to walk up to get to them because the streets flood. There's a good, like... Yeah, well, well above your ankle, the floods. Like, sometimes they go over the steps so they'll be as high as your knees. And then a couple of hours later, it's all drained away. So it doesn't stick around like the floods in this country seem to stick around f for a long time. And there's a road around the corner that gets flooded every now and then. It, I don't. I think I've seen it. Fl oh, I've got itchy, itchy leg. Oh, oh, I think I've seen it flooded twice. There was once when it was flooded. This is when I had Andre and my friend downstairs. We used to. We were just walking down that road. And he, because he was a lot taller than me, I don't know how that makes any difference, but I think he was wearing shorts. That makes a bit of difference. And I think he had Crocs. So he was walking through the water. It didn't really bother him. And because he's taller than me, it looked like he was walking on the water. And that makes no sense whatsoever, does it? <laughs> and I'm... But he's managing to avoid the deep parts it's like it looks fairly shallow so I'm I think okay I'll follow him and I end up up to my knees in water in fact I think I tripped over you know what happened then one of the neighbours who was standing on their driveway which is all at a, like a hill because they've clearly been built on a place where floods they said, oh, you can walk through our driveways if you want. After I'd fallen in. After. They could see me walking, trying to get through it. Didn't offer me when I was dry. I don't know if it was they were offering it just as a reward for entertaining them, maybe. Giving them a little giggle. <laughs> And my friend just walked through. He didn't go up, you know, went up to about his ankles. He had crocs. He just just helped him wash his feet. That was it. Didn't bother him. Me, I was completely... And he managed to not hit the ditches. Oh, my leg's itchy. I think it's time to have another wash. But I already had one this year. <sighs> Oh, in Thailand. This is what I realised. Because I was walking home. It wasn't a long way. But it was a long way when that amount of rain. Because they have like... Probably the equivalent of a month's rain in an hour. Compared to here. Like an hour's worth of rain here. No, a month's worth of rain here. I'm exaggerating, but I'm just it's a hell of a lot. Like... The term bucketing in, bucketing down, bucking, bucket, bucking it down, bucking it down, bucking, bucking, ting, ting, down, you know, like someone pouring a bucket of water on you. That is what it felt like, but multiple buckets. Like it's, just a, it's like standing under a waterfall. Which is something I've never done, so I don't know if it is like standing under a waterfall at all. Probably not. But it's very, very, very hard rain. It was. So I'm walking towards the place I was staying. And there's people in the bar, all nice and dry, laughing in my direction. Come and have a drink. They would say. That's when I realised. That. 
the grumpy side of me, the moody side of me, wasn't left at home. I don't leave that. It comes with me wherever I go. It's very strange, you know, that whole idea of maybe being on holiday and, you know, not taking things seriously or not, not, you know, not being affected by things that perhaps I would normally be affected by. That wasn't the case. I was equally affected. (laughs) I mean, admittedly, it's rare that I would get completely drenched although it has happened multiple times over the years. There's one time I remember, I was, it was 1995. It was in the summer. I had a t-shirt, trousers, jeans or something like that. No, it wasn't a t-shirt. I think it was a, it was a shirt, but it was a silk shirt, but like really thin. And I was really thin as well. And it was kind of, it was like the old joke, I'd have to run around in the shower to get wet. I was that skinny. But I was, I was really, really, really slim. So this is 1995. It's a thunderstorm, but really heavy rain. I'm walking to, I don't know where I was going. I did know at the time. You know, I was heading somewhere, but I don't remember now where I was going. It might have been to collect my laundry. Although I think I had a washing machine where I was living. I really don't know. Maybe I was going up to to the off-licence. But there was a shop open around the corner. I don't know where I was going, but... Oops. Knocking stuff over now. I'm walking down this road. And I see... A lady who I was... Or had been dating. It was kind of one of those relationships that just... Fizzled out to nothing. I mean, it didn't start off particularly exciting for either of us anyway but it just fizzled out it was like almost there was no real no real chemistry there you know not even we got on but we didn't particularly want to spend time with each other (laughs) which is not a good start for a relationship and I saw her, I was going through a bit of a difficult time anyway, with my physical health, because I'd been ill, but I'd had problems with my stomach for about six months, seven months, and anyway, I'd have stress related apparently, it turned out, so I'm just, I'm walking and I'm getting absolutely soaked, and she stops, and we end up having a conversation, and she's getting absolutely soaked, she's got a t-shirt on, I'm starting to find her attractive again. And it was a weird moment because there was nothing there and there was nothing to talk about. I think I was just not good company. There, that was the kind of situation. I wasn't good company. I was just go through some, you know, just self pitying or whatever. And that's the whole story. I don't know why I've been talking about it. And then I walked on and did went to where I was going. I don't know where it was. I just remember being absolutely drenched. And it was lovely. Because it was warm. It was a sun, a sunny, sunny day. Well, it wasn't a sunny day, obviously. But it was sunny somewhere. The sun was out. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see each other, would we? But... It is a proper one. Well, I guess it's more like a summer storm. I mean, you could say that about any storm that was just during the summer, couldn't you? I guess. But it's absolutely soaked 
to the point where, and I didn't wear glasses at the time, that I couldn't even keep my eyes open. And neither could she. Although she had, did she was holding an umbrella, so I think it was more just through boredom. Why didn't I have an umbrella? I think I was, I still want to sort of say, when I say umbrella, like umbrella, Ella, Ella, Ella. Weird thing about this lady, not, I'm not going to say anything personal about her. Um, she was a comedian. I would, well, we were both doing like open spots, just still, you know, doing comedy and, she was just starting out. I've been doing it for a few years, very unsuccessfully. She was just started out. I mean, she, I don't know if she went on to continue doing it. I don't really don't know. However, she, one of my friends or someone that I knew, that I'd, I'd, be, I'd known since 91, and we often would walk home together from, Shoreditch all the way to Stratford because he lived he didn't live right near me but he lived up the road from me so he lived more probably Forest Gate area and I lived in Stratford so we'd walk that way and he you know it was a, it was a good way to walk off the the booze although there was I didn't drink much back then So we'd talk, and you know, it was, it was quite a long walk. You'd sort of get down, come out of Liverpool, sh no, come out of Shoreditch, turn right, and then head. Yes, yeah, sometimes we would go to Liverpool Street to try and get the train or the bus. Well, the train's too late, so we wouldn't be getting out there till two o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we'd try and get a bus, but if it didn't turn up, we'd walk. So we'd We'd walk down to Whitechapel, then all the way down Whitechapel Road, and then turn left, which there, which would lead to Stratford. Yeah, Whitechapel. Whitechapel leads to Mile End, so that there must have been like a cut-off point where you, I can't remember exactly. But it turns into you know, the cut off turning, which then leads to Stratford. We did that loads of times, like numerous, numerous times. And it was quite nice, you know, having someone to do the walk with. So I, I mean, I did it on my own sometimes, but I preferred it to be with someone really, because being around that time of night in that area. Anyway, I saw him in a club, comedy club, probably during 1996. And he came up to me and he said, uh, did, you, did you sleep with whatever her name is? Or did you have a thing with her? This is the, the lady that I was talking about earlier. The, the wet t-shirt. No, no the, the, the lady that I was kind of seeing. And then I stopped seeing her. And he said, did you, you been with her? Have you? I'm like, well, what's it got to do with you? First of all. And he's saying, well, people have told me on the circuit that you and her were together. And she wanted to me and her she wants to get together with me but she keeps saying that nothing happened between you two but um, I want to hear it from you I can't remember what I told him now that's an anti-climax to the story admittedly knowing myself back then I probably would have told the truth I don't know but it seemed like it was, to me it's, it's no one's business but the idea of being with her after be her being with me didn't. It, it, it kind of had the opposite effect to Viagra. That's what I'm saying. 
for him wasn't quite the wasn't quite the tonic. So yeah, I don't really know what what happened there. And then I saw her, which is ironic. I saw her quite locally, and she said, "Can you tell him that nothing happened between me and you because he won't come near me?" I said, "No." She got to. Why have I got to help? What? It's nothing to do with me. You deal with him yourself. I'm not going to start trying to pretend that something didn't happen when it that had happened, just so that you can get your oats or whatever you want to call it. It wasn't that I was trying to stop their relationship, if that's what it was, but just leave me out of it. I don't mind though. It's nothing to do with me. I had a similar thing at Churchill. There was there was this this female and she she kept smiling at me. I don't know what department she worked in, but she'd come round and hand out letters and do stuff. She was in the admin department. I don't know what exactly what her job was. And she came down one day. I was on the phones and she, or I was maybe off the phone, but I was sitting down at the desk this is insurance and she started she smiled at me and then she started saying hello to me when I saw her and I really didn't know what to make of it because you know my my self esteem wasn't huge at that point after moving away from London it's, I lost my mojo completely my mojo was very much intact in London when I left London my mojo just become a just became a Joe basically and so I said well, we ended up going out for for lunch together like during normal lunch time and just had a couple of drinks in the pub got chatting and it turns out she had a boyfriend it was a completely I don't know I mean she was nice nice person and I used to see her outside of work as well because she, she left and she had a job in a restaurant and I'd see her. No, it's not a restaurant. It was a, it was a restaurant, but a place you could go and eat. We well, you know what a restaurant is, JJ? I know. I don't. You know, there's different restaurants, isn't it? This was a place where you could, more like an eatery, somewhere that you can get food. Yeah, that's a restaurant. No, what I mean is, it's more like a cafe, like a mi- like a midway between cafe and restaurant, like a public place with tables, but they serve food, but it kind of also served coffee as well, but it wasn't a coffee place, unless it was a coffee place, in which case it was a coffee place. That served food, but we used to go in there, and that was when I was going in there with my Buddhist friends after I left uh, Churchill. And she was in there, so I used to see her, and yeah, she's lovely, lovely person. Nothing ever happened because she had a boyfriend, and I don't think she was particularly interested in me, really, to be honest. And then Someone came up to me, someone I worked with in a different team. He said, "If you, you got you got off with, I don't know what her name was, Tina. Let's just, for example, say Tina. I don't. That wasn't her name, but uh, she had a more quite an exotic name actually. I can't remember. Tashauna or something like that. But she's and he said." I heard you got off with whatever, and I was like, again, my my attitude and response is, so, <laughs> what, you know, what, why are you asking me that? What what business is that of anybody's? And she said, oh, me and her, um, she asked me out for a date, and, or well, we were going to get together, but someone told me that you'd gone, in his in his words, you'd gone there. You'd, you'd been with her, I said, well, in this instance, I just said, put him straight. I wasn't hugely 
a fan of the conversation because the idea that it discussed in that he'd, she'd been with me or that she might have been with me, like, that was... I didn't like that. However, I kind of know where he's coming from, in it, to a degree. Um, maybe he just didn't want to step on my toes. He wanted to make, make sure there was nothing going on there. And I assured him, I said, no. No, I said, yep. Every night of the week, we do it. No. I said, no, nothing happened. There's nothing going on between me and her. And that was it. But it's like gossip. They must someone someone must have seen us together in the pub and gone back. Blah, Jason and um Fellatio was together. Blah, 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 blah. You know? But nothing nothing happened. I didn't date one person. The whole time I worked in insurance, I didn't date one person that worked in insurance. Not once. Wasn't through not wanting to. It just, as I said, my mojo was gone. I, I gradually got my mojo back in two thousand and five. After a four-year hiatus of pretty much nothing, so I had three girlfriends in two thousand and five, and then. Yeah, 2007. Wait, oh no, 2006 I had a girlfriend. And then 2007 I had a girlfriend. And then again, nothing for years. Let's go through these peaks and troughs, if you want it. Peaks and troughs, is that the right word? Well, though, there was... There was this... An incident did happen at Churchill. We went to. It was a gala, like a ball, a summer ball or something. I got very drunk. Everyone got very drunk. But someone did. Uh, well, I think it was a lady. I'm pretty sure. Basically, grabbed me and started kissing me. Like dragging me on the dance floor and kissing me because I was just standing at the sides so we'd all had our dinners and lunches or whatever I took a packed lunch <laughs> no I didn't <laughs> um, we bought the builder lunch box and she started kissing me but I I don't remember who it was genuinely don't know who it was that did it and she just disappeared. I mean, she didn't literally disappear. I mean, if that was a the case, then that would explain why all my girlfriends leave me. <laughs> that was weird, yeah. But that, I mean, that wasn't a relationship, was it, really? I did ask out a receptionist in my second insurance job. I regretted that. It's, it's almost like the worst person to ask out. It's, it, it's just in a sense of... I had to go past her multiple times a day. After she said no. I mean, she did just say no, flat out. I'm not sure she laughed, but she did say no. I, and I, we were getting so well, and she was, I, f, I don't know, I don't know if she was flirting or just being friendly. Well, I do know she wasn't flirting now, but at the time I didn't know she was. Well, tell me if you think this is flirty or not, if this is flirting. So this is me. Morning. This is her. Hi. So that'd be in the morning, and I come out, go to lunch, I come back. Afternoon, and this is her. Hi. And then I'd be leaving. I said, "Yeah, good night. See you tomorrow." And she'd be going, "Yeah, bye." So, tell me or not, did I get the wrong signal? 
because I know it can happen. Well, obviously it clearly did happen. I thought she was into me. But there was one day, uh, I think I went up to the reception because I thought, I'll just see if I can get into a conversation with her. And I said, so what? I knew she had a holiday coming up. I don't know how I knew. No, it might not be in a holiday because that sounds really freaky. How do you know what she's doing? No, I think it was there was the Easter holiday or bank holiday coming up. So I thought, okay, I'll just, you know, sort of say, um, so what are you up to this bank holiday? And she said, um, none of your business. If that's not flirting, what is? There was another time, and what is it? Oh yeah, she had actually been on holiday, and she came back. She wasn't there for a week, and I missed her tremendously, and I'm sure she missed me as well. And I actually sort of asked her that. I said, "Do you have a nice holiday?" She said, "Yes, thanks." And I said, "Did you, did you miss me?" She said, look, I'm trying to work. I have to be friendly to people, but you're making it very difficult for me. I just need to be left alone to do my job. I don't want you to keep coming up and talking to me. Um, can you please just leave me alone? If that's not flirting, what is it? Hey, that's not flirting. There was another time. I just came in and I gave her a, it's like a little, I didn't want to get flowers because that just seemed a little bit, a little bit presumptuous. And clearly she liked me and it's in my head, I'm like, okay, with flowers. And I kind of decided on a plant. So I did. I walked in and I said to her, Hi, you right? Afternoon? Because after, because I went to lunch and came back. She said, Hi. And I said, I got you a gift. She said, Oh, please don't. What? You got me a gift? I said, Yeah, I got you a gift. I was going to get you um, some flowers and I thought, No. So I didn't think you, you know, it'd be a bit, a little bit inappropriate to get you flowers. So, and um, I thought about getting you a plant, but I didn't know kind of what plant you'd like. So, and I was going to get you flat. I was going to get you some chocolates, but I thought you probably don't need, you know, that might put weight on, so that might not be a good, good thing for you. So I thought. <laughs> uh, and I th- and I th- and and I th- what I thought I would do is I'd get you two two presents. So here's your first present, and I put it on the on the desk on the counter, you know, of the reception. He said, "What is it?" I said, "It's, it's a it's a cactus." You bought me a cactus. Yeah, it's a cactus. I mean, technically, I bought it for you, but. I found it in the bin, but it's fine. It's it's okay. I I washed the vomit off, well, I wiped it off, and so there you go. It's a happy happy Tuesday because I thought happy romantic. Just say happy Tuesday. She said it's Thursday. I said okay, it's fine. She's playing hard to get. It's okay. She's and I said I've got another present. She said okay. I said like well, I'm trying to you know. So I, I wanted to lead up to asking her out. So I thought if I did this as a gesture, then I could lead, and she'd like like me. She because clearly she liked me because she was giving off all the vibes of being really interested. And I thought, what can I get her? So what I did is I got some um, 
I gave them to her, like in a packet. It's just, and it's like, there you go. I said, I didn't, I didn't put it in wrapping paper because I just bought it and I didn't have any wrapping paper. And she said, okay. And she looked at it. And she looked up at me. She showed it to her, because there was another person on the, the reception as well. It was two people. She showed it to them. She gave a weird look. And her, her I was a friend, but the other receptionist said, edible underwear. You bought her edible underwear. Are you serious? And I said, that's not all. And I knelt down and I said, uh, would you like to go on a, come out on a date with me? And she said, I can't see you when you're kneeling down. I said, okay. So she didn't really hear me. I didn't say it very loudly. She said, you need to speak a bit louder as well. I said, okay. Do you ever lose control of the volume and you talk way too loudly by accident? Because that's what happened here. I said, uh, do you want to go out on a date with me? But I kind of shouted it. The office, just like through to the office where all the people were talking, suddenly became quiet. And I thought, that's not a good sign. And the receptionist that I was asking out started throwing stuff from behind the reception, like a stapler. She started throwing bits of like pads of paper, pens. And I thought, that's also not a good sign. Well, after all that, it turned out that she didn't want to go out on me. And that was very awkward. Because from then on, I had to kind of keep walking past her. I mean, technically, I didn't have to keep walking past her. But, you know, during, in order to leave the building, <laughs> I had to walk past her. That was the only way past. Or if I went upstairs, I'd sort of see her and... Yeah, that was difficult. That's just so hard. Is it? It's really hard to know where people's minds are. You know, if you kind of you get the vibe that someone likes you, really likes you, but it's it's easy to get mis mixed signals. But as soon as she said no, I just said. Um, Well, I couldn't talk because I was crying. But I was like, just... I went back to my desk and... They sent me home. Until a disciplinary. The next the next uh, Monday. But yeah, it was... Part of that was, it was quite good. Working there. That was very strange. Remember there was, there was someone I liked there, and, but she was just a bit young for me, I was 31 and I think she was like 18 or 19, I'm probably about 19, and I got on really well with her, but she's, yeah, she's, this is a different person I've got, I genuinely got on well with. I did have a female friend that I got on really well with that I spent quite a bit of time together outside of work but we never we didn't have a romantic relationship but we did spend a, a lot of time together yeah I just figured that she spent so much time with me that she didn't couldn't have any feelings 
I always find that the best way to ruin a relationship is to spend time with someone. That, that generally works for me. Oh, there was a, yeah, there was someone I liked in the second insurance job. Actually, there was this, there was this female in the first insurance job that, um, do you never see someone and just like get a, get a vibe, a wrong vibe about them? Like they just don't, don't like that person for no reason at all really. But there was this, this female young female and I just like just she never spoke to me never acknowledged me and to this day we never would have spoken to each other but which makes me think it might have been her wow we at the ball the summer ball I was put next to her don't know why, but I was sat next to her. She wasn't in my team. She wasn't even in my... I don't think she... She was in the sales department, but where away from me. I didn't, I didn't even know what her name was. So, and she was sitting next to me. It turned out she was absolutely de delightful. A delightful person. F lovely. Funny. Interesting. Really nice. And I had this different impression of her when I would see her walking around. It was this it's weird. It's like I try not to be judgmental. I try not to be. I'm a human being, well, partly human sometimes. So I but it's weird how well we got together. We got on together. Unless she's the one that kissed me. I don't think she liked it because she disappeared. So whoever it was that did kiss me at that ball, they, I don't know if they just left left the company. I don't, I don't know who. They definitely left the dance floor. I think it might, it's very dark though, so I couldn't see them, perhaps. Unless I imagined it. In fact, I think it was two women kissed me. I say, if you're going to lie, you might as well make it a, good, a better lie, innit? it? Might exaggerate the lie. It was a hundred. Hundred. A hundred hundred. Ten million. I'm trying to think there's any other... I did have one one of the one lady invite me to watch the fireworks with her at her house, but I couldn't be bothered, so I said no. She was in my team, and I'm just like, oh. oh, there was this really, there was this female that started. I'm saying female. I don't want to say girl because she was. Young, she was like probably 19, 20, 21 or whatever. But I was only 31, it's not like I was old. So I'm kind of trying to say female or lady. Normally I'd just say person. She annoyed me so much. She was just one of these really loud people. And, but like, just she'd say things and she'd talk to me like I was a grandfather like I was a hundred seriously I could, could like I remember I pulled my phone out once yeah it was my phone yeah I pulled my phone out and she said oh I thought you'd have one of those really old fashioned phones what you mean a landline you think it's going to be connected to my house like really long, like six mile <laughs> line. What? Why would I not have a decent phone? Bearing in mind, I was earning probably twice as much as she was. 
because she was she was having the basics. She didn't sell much. I was doubling my income with the with the bonus. And it might sound like I'm showing off because I am. Because there's very few things in my life that I've done that are worth showing off about. And that's one of them. I was pretty good at that job. While I was there. I mean, technically you can't be good at a job you're not at, can you? I suppose, if you go literal. But she was like, oh, I thought you'd have a really crappy old phone. Like, because I had an up-to-date phone. No. Like if I'd if iPhones had been around had been around then, I would have had an iPhone. I'd have, I'd have had the latest iPhone. Because I, it's like, why not? <laughs> Just, I didn't understand it, and she'd ask me questions like rude questions, not like being rude to me, but she'd ask me about rude stuff. Wanting to get my, the the male perspective, why do my why why do men like to finish there on this part of us like stuff like that? It's like I don't know, I can't imagine anyone would want to do that with you. I didn't say that. I didn't. I might have said that. I might have done. There was this one female. I have the same feeling. When I first started working at Churchill, I really liked her. Like she was the first person that caught my eye, and there was something about her just, just really, yeah, really. And she was friendly to me. But the problem is, when I got to to that town from London, I did still have part of my mojo connected, but it eroded. With every day that I was there, it seemed to erode a little bit more. And instead of being feeling like, or having some kind of self esteem or confidence with, uh, in a, in a, in kind of a romantic aspect, it just deleted. So I never asked her out, I just liked her from afar. And there was another lady that started. I did like her. And she did come up to me during a break time. Because we used to hang out in the summer outside. There was a a shop. It was like a cafe. No, sandwich shop. And they used to call it Dirties. And the reason they call it Dirties. They like the staff called They didn't call it Dirties. It was um, a family-run business, but the people that worked at where I worked, the call centre, they called it Dirties, because apparently one day the the lady who was making the sandwich sneezed while she was making the sandwich and just continued. <laughs> she used the bread as a hanky. <laughs> She didn't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. I didn't see that coming. She used the bread as a, used, used the bread as a, as a hanky. Did I say the bread is a sandwich? Or as a hanky? I meant to say hanky. I hope I didn't say sandwich. Because that had been weird. Why is he laughing at that? Using the bread as a sandwich, that's how that's how sandwiches are made. So they called it dirties because apparently someone sneezed over while they were, you know, putting a sandwich t- <laughs> together. Ugh. I mean I guess you wouldn't notice it so much if it was a salad sandwich. And so I was in there and I'd I'd get a cheese roll with a sausage roll. It's a cheese and tomato roll, and then I get a hot sausage roll and put that inside the cheese and tomato roll and squash it in, and I'd stuff that down with a drink of some kind. And there's this new person, she'd only been there for a little while, and she came up to me and started talking to me. 
And see, I really liked her right from the minute I saw her when she came in and and she used to smile at me. And the thing is, I just didn't know what to say. I just didn't have... See, I could talk all day long on the phone to people. But put someone in front of me, especially female. Not a female, any female, but just like someone that I liked, that I was attracted to. I'd just dry up. I just wouldn't... It's like my words would disappear. Still a little bit like that these days. And I do wonder, and again, it was all these, like, gossip about her when she started. People were saying, oh, she's married to a yoga teacher. Okay. But it turns out she wasn't married to anyone. She didn't have a boyfriend. It was just, I don't think people were saying that in order, the blokes were saying it in order to get the other blokes to leave her alone. Well, not leave her alone, but to not kind of ask her out or anything. And also, you know, I was at work. I mean, all the stuff about the reception, I was just... I did ask her out, but none of the stuff that I said happened there. Um, apart from the cactus and the, the underwear. But... You know, I'm not, I wasn't really one to... I think someone should better go to work and not have people keep asking them out and stuff. So yeah, that's why I didn't... But I only ever asked one person out, and that was a receptionist, and that was it, and nothing happened. And, yeah, that was embarrassing. Literally, the first person that I'd asked out, probably, like that, that in that kind of scenario, since... I was, yeah, since about 91, for, for, so it was a good 11, 12 years, 11 years, maybe 12 years, since I'd asked anyone out like that. Usually I got get, you know, I would get to know someone and then they'd fall mad in love with me and I'd have no idea. I'm not good at taking hints. I'm not 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 great at knowing when someone. I mean, I'm talking about it in the past, not now so much. But there's been occasions where someone's you know clearly liked me, but I've been oblivious. And it's hard to believe, isn't it, when you consider how how bright and intelligent I am. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. What got me talking about that? I don't know. I'm trying to think if there's any other things. Huh. <sighs> I just had a phone call which uh, disrupted my flow. My flow. I'm assuming there was some kind of flow going on. I don't know if there was. I haven't a clue what I was talking about. Uh. Asking people... <laughs> Asking people out unsuccessfully, probably that might be the the theme of the of this recording. I can't remember the last time I actually asked someone out, like on a date. No, no, you you know how things just happen naturally. But it's not a date. It's not like, oh. 
I mean, I met up with someone in 2011 that I met, so let's meet up. But it wasn't kind of let's go out, it was just let's meet up and then we ended up um, dating afterwards for a little while. Oh no, I did have a date. I had a date in 2000, at the beginning of 2011. Yeah, because I had soup. She made me soup and a bit of bread. I thought she was going to get me to do hard labour, breaking some rocks or something. But that's all the food I was going to get. Soup. It's not food. <laughs> it's a starter for a reason. It's an appetizer. It's almost like a, a palate cleanser. I love bread rolls. I haven't had any bread rolls for a while, but... Oh. That's probably my favourite part of going to a restaurant, is the bread rolls. A bread basket. Oh, mm, mm. Maybe it's because I'm hungry. Because, like, with a normal situation, you eat. You just eat, don't you? You're like, I'm hungry, I'll eat. I'll eat. But with a date... There's faffing around and waiting around, maybe waiting for a taxi and then perhaps getting stuck in traffic and perhaps waiting around for the restaurant. It's not the table's not ready yet, especially if it's not booked. So when I actually get to sit down, I'm ready to eat the menu, literally the menu itself, just is yeah maybe to do that because let's face it when you're hungry food tastes better so if it's a you do that as a trick if you've got a restaurant make sure that the only people that eat there are really hungry because then everyone's going to give you like five stars oh that was the most amazing bit of smelly fish I've ever had in my life oh that dry three year old burger oh that tastes so good saying that I'm going to have some they're not hot crust buns they're like tea tea buns tea cakes so I've got some tea cakes cup of tea and I'm going to edit this and upload it later because I'm going to have a little break. Tomorrow I'm doing a Q&A Friday so I have put a question on there. I've also on my website duh, 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 I've got a, a link for Q&A Friday. I didn't mention that because I didn't upload I didn't update the page. On my page so on my Facebook group you can add but not you know, can ask a question, but not everybody's on my Facebook group, and not everybody that listens to me is on Facebook either. At least a few have told me. So I've now got Q and A Friday in the index, or in the menu. If you click on that, it's just Q and A Friday. I make Q and A Fridays every week. If you have a question for me to answer, please fill in the form below. So it's just your name, your email address, and your message. So that's just the question you got. And you click whether or not you're a robot. And if you are a robot, say yes. If you're not, say no. I mean, I do realise it perhaps is a bit prejudiced to be asking people such personal questions. Yeah. So that's it. So I will be back tomorrow with Q&A Friday number whatever. I've been doing Q&A Fridays for ages now. Just like the Trivia Tuesdays have been going on for quite a while as well. Blimey. I've stuck to them. Yes, I'm quite pleased. Q&A Fridays is really, I've stuck to it. It's almost, it's almost become part of the week now. Like Friday is Q&A Friday. I would say it's pretty much established. 
Trivia Tuesday, maybe not so much, but I think it's getting there. It's now becoming quite a regular occurrence. I did try out some others, but I just find it hard to stick to such a rigid schedule. You know, if every day has its own thing. Sunday papers as well. I've kind of been quite good with the Sunday papers. I've been doing them quite regularly also. Oh, oh well. I'm going to go and have my tea cakes and a cup of tea. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself and be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice Maybe in a few hours time, perhaps tomorrow. And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from... We're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualisation. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was the person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful, and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players 
press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, a tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation and I remember my mind would slow down I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, 
and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring, and I think, I don't remember snoring, I remember talking, is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation 
This allows you to breathe easier. Without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing, improving. When I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. With a joyful heart. Time seems to just drip by so very slowly relaxed so 
so deeply peaceful. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs
feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, the mind becomes even slower. So 
a very slow stomach peaceful in your stomach Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine from your brain all the way down the middle of your back sending and receiving millions of messages every day Deeply relaxed. Your knees, relax. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back and letting go really letting go Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice your forehead and your eyes. in a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
करते हैं Peaceful energy of notice. Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And 
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And you give yourself a rest. Giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive healing energy, which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort, and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together, almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness. And it feels nice really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck. Focus. 
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back Moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. As you move up and down, your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back, as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser, the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips, so down your lower back into your hips. into the area where your coccyx are and into your buttocks and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax. So calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose.
those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. It feels so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles. Also relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms. healing you feel so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders which sends that deep healing message your arms you may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed so spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Focusing now on 
is a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. Tips. to the front of your body muscles in your thighs your knees
muscles and your shins completely So I'm going to start counting down now, from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Nineteen. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now Focus in on your eyes. You're going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now.
있고 So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. You just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think Think about anything. So it, op it opens up a space, you know, a bit of a space, a gap. And the more I count down from 10 to 1, the bigger that gap becomes. So there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. sound really weird but I think that all of our body parts especially our thighs need some TLC a bit of love shown a bit of acknowledgement a thank you Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. It's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. If you move down to your knees, again, such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily... I'll speak for myself here. I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason, it's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed. You know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees... Regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now on the bottoms of your legs, your shins and your calf muscles, 
muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet. Incorporating, of course, your ankles. So important. You know, anyone that's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms, which is, okay, doesn't, can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up. But our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs. And from a physics perspective, or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. There's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. I was like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins, there to protect your lower legs, shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles. And your feet. But we're not going to focus on your feet. We're just going to focus on the legs. And I realise. That now that I've mentioned your feet. You're probably. Focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body, can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff is inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. And you could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. Of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. It's very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part. That crease your legs, it's almost it's like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different of course it's protected by your legs so you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. That fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips. Imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue. You can, of course, feel the the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. And then doing the same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are because our legs are so precious as in all the other parts of our body they're more precious than any jewel on the planet When you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, the 
idea of having the love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, as in fact my whole legs do, my feet feet also go whew, and my toes clap I'm so happy your legs really and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, a very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 Six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. And as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle.
passo. and just observing the sensation of letting go completely This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Six, slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
with some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them. You just need them. You require them. To just calm down. Slow down. Quiet down. For now. as you focus on those remaining thoughts as we count down this time from seven down to one with each number just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love kindness gratitude over those thoughts which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply with every number those thoughts will become more with number seven
imagine now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. on your hands and your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching the fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels, and the more comfort you feel throughout your body. that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your Each 
starting with number Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. Just 
generally thinking about stuff. When you take that away, which is what we do, what we do now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness. which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where Everything is peaceful. A place where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself. where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever. A place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways, more importantly, you can like yourself. Appreciate who you are. And that sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Healing energy soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. And you start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain. It's become part of your brain. spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing, relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now, but tomorrow and the next day. As your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past. 
for some reason no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you're the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. Sure, I'm telling you, stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. The more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. It's 
very, very easy to let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within you. Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose. For yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower. It's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will 
turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry, doesn't, it doesn't, des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here, negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. nice, doesn't it, to just let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty.
is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. to give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organ 
lies inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled and packed with living energy. feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. Deeply increases. In a way that starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission for your body and your mind, in fact, I give the command to your body and your mind to relax. drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop. Because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drifting to sleep, and that's the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on your fingers. a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. Both hands. And even though as you focus on both of your hands now, they now seem to just melt into one. your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if it was mixed together. Now focusing on the knees. Focusing on your elbows. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
go letting go letting I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table, lying on your front, your head is supported, your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. So I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You 
can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck, of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. And this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. And the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow our knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders. 
moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And make it feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we'll do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. And what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. I don't want it to still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching your fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where you're with the BFD, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving down. stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want. across a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back, you can 
do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching the body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it. You really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged. It releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. And massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
with the upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area of muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest from the back, connect together. And we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down Including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. Very sensitive, gentle area. Working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, the fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot, massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet.
gently but firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers, each one individually. And then moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, moving down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. As 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin. moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. I think it is quite a large area. As you can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention. To feel really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, from just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your 
ribs all the way down to below your belly button. And then move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply. something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of so now massage your stomach front of your stomach and in circles around your belly button and going the other way around and the gentleness and the freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling So now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles, massaging them. And I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, in front of your thighs. Gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles. Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoy feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy. going to 
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. that candle in front of you and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out just this is not a big it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish and then I'll say the next number as we move down and you can just blow that one yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, and you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest the pigeons the 
likes to say hello sometimes. And there's the odd plane that goes by. There could be traffic and trains in the distance. But none of that seems important whatsoever. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. Eight. 
Sí.
die Eid.
those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, what your body starts to do because you've chosen you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down and it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you so often we're busy we're going from here to there we're walking around and we're doing stuff and the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply so it kind of waits for you to lead the way waits for your permission do give your permission and you give the say so you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all that like a breath of relief the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past where you get home and you just sit down in a chair maybe you kick your shoes off and that oh feels so nice knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour feels blissful and just by sitting down like that the body knows that it's time to relax your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind will prepare to evaporate and your tensions can 
just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in your body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more of alien. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind and it is almost like a literal unwinding it's like you press a button just releases and it's like a wheel like a cog like the inside of the clock just unwinding and it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up and the energy that frenetic stressful energy gradually winding down losing its power losing its strength as a sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper and you may find stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and that was just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed and tense we not we may not actually be aware of what we need, what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries. feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Even your breathing seems easier. and relaxation and 
just breathing out any excess feeling or tension or stress from every part of your body and mind. And as you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things have come to a standstill be just much, much slower than before, because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice, which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. Synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know when feeling completely calm, loose, and relaxed really is. benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your hair glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp where your brain is you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain to the rest of your body and your mind to really relax even more deeply relax even more completely go of any remaining thoughts or concerns allow them to drop onto the floor because they're no longer necessary in this moment in this moment of deep relaxation
this ever increasing sensation of warmth. scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice 
دیگه تاج to move your hands around just maybe move your fingers a little bit opening and closing your hands very gently just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel now on your feet and if you can just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands maybe turning in your ankles moving your feet around and open your toes gently Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes them, maybe raising your eyebrows as it stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects. Focusing on your thighs. And I would just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel. Noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very, 
sensations physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now as we now focus on the tops of your on those parts, the tops of your arms, and you like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly, so you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever. above your forehead, and as you are able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly, if that is a difficult thing to do, then maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using the hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how
rising up against it, the top of the mat, and then down gently against the bottom of the mat. Always very slowly and very, very gently. sensations that you have currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving from your hands up and down, beginning include the sides of the body as those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area and then into your buttocks. Thank you. 
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movement of energy very small make up the larger movements, which is always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations whether pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, and just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings not being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you the feelings in your arms Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. Just 
just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm. Your right forearm there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling like it's there the feelings in your shoulders perhaps your shoulders when you think about them kind of almost like they're the same you know the same feeling almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing course they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, you can tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. Your lower back. side of your lower back. Of course that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently, just stretched a little bit even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back. It just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along that feel in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And the 
so much of the chest. You can see there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not act different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side or underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in the chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing. In. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. A little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. I don't know. I notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. That's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back feels quite nice actually the good thing about this is you can if you want to you can just flex various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle, It relaxes way more than it would normally. And you have to feel that you're able to do that. At any point, 
doing it is uh, um, an issue with the pelvic part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing and deeper. And something in between. yourself. And you notice your mind. How much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. With nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body to fill your body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to as if you're moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there, kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship space movie, you know, when they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Safe, free,
listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different my being started to almost move into some kind of a dreaming state to that space of comfort and safety. As you feel more comfort spreading through your body, sense of peace spreads through your mind 
analysis. physical sensation most like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress and all your remaining feelings that you don't like sucking it out through your skull full of fresh air, a place where you can stretch, it's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sensation that you'd like to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all, This is something that you can do yourself on your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just
yourself free. Just let it be a well of calm and healing. necessary for you so that you can affirm what you feel you want to say the numbers 10 out of your head faster than I do and go ahead and do that and if you feel you want to do it yourself then you can make ahead
the sin and physical form of our past bad and past sinful life, allowing stress and tension to leave from the fingertips and the toes. And as you focus on the fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly. together for another day, this time you're going to feel relief and tension and stress and the anxiety that you may have, breathing in through your stomach, just breathing through your stomach, almost as if it's just releasing of your stomach and the navel through just above your chest and below your chest area, so it's surrounding your body that area and for the whole area you can feel the tension of your body, whatever's left just releasing from that area and you may notice that your stomach is becoming very relaxed as has been just do a little scanning of your body to notice how your body feels, focusing on your upper body, your head, your chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet, just noticing Focus. 
Sometimes we can feel trapped in silence and get stuck in society. We feel trapped in our ways. Focusing on what you need. I think that's the area that you need to release tension and stress from your mind. Your brain, your mind, and any tension that you may have had with men in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your eyes, in your forehead, and in your skin. You need to do any tension, even your
yourself some space to breathe and listen to it. Just sit and allow it. And just to take a break from all the pointless worry and concerns about things that you don't need to think about. you to make up your mind who you're going to be next. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide who you're going to be next. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when I'm telling myself who next. And it brings me a bit further now, that only you can really tell yourself who you are. It's the kind of thing I say when I'm saying to you, do you want to relax? Relax. be gentle but you can't someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say test it out. You do a little test, do little tests along the way and you can get more of an idea of the thoughts, the positive thoughts that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. How quickly
let's start by just just focusing the head. So focusing the head, is this tail head relaxed? Does this say relaxed as you focus on the head? You could say my hands are relaxed or I want my hands to relax. But I think if you actually do it directly focusing and imagining that your hands can you feel the tail now if you've got little ears you can have a little look so talking to your hands can you just say relax Focus on your eyes and feel your eyes relax. So just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right tone for you. So now I might say relax. So you you might say relax or relax. So you know you, you might say it differently to yourself. That's important for you to gauge what feels right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, the eyebrows, and just tell your eyes directly. Got myself um, sometimes you may feel that you need to put on a tone for the different parts of your legs you know should I start talking by maybe a part of my upper arm fully I'm really happy now that I've got that kind of relaxing ability what's happening something else I noticed is when I started focusing on my eyes I actually almost did feel a bit worse feel a bit better in a way feel that I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing so I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there but I wasn't focusing on it fully. So I wasn't really acknowledging it or um, really actually feeling it either. have got a certain kind of buzz in them, not, not buzz in them, but a kind of feeling of like energy in your heart, and you don't feel the tension you feel in your head, maybe that's the case for you. focus on the back of the neck that's a part that I feel um, well for me I was comfortable I don't know about for yourself um, it doesn't quite have a standard place where tension is sometimes felt so and I'm, I'm doing
基爾也作了一夜會在附近的維索普拉這裡破壞了石柱石柱推論為這一場雷暴有可能損毀附近的維索
what is here this time can you focus on the holy deputy before you move on to someone else just notice how the body does start to feel How, how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily moving to that. Don't be worrying about your feet at the moment. It's that spark. Is that gap of calmness and comfort and relaxation. So now feel it. Don't need a watery or disjointed squeaky sound in your ear. Notice 